Undoubtedly one of the most iconic movies based on a music group named after Bugs is the film Yellow Submarine, produced by the then brand new Apple Studios. This movie is questionable in some of its influences, but it's undoubtedly a hilarious adventure of what some consider to be the greatest band in history. The most iconic item in the movie is definitely Mr. Yellow Submarine himself. Now even though no one asked me to do so, I determined that someone needed to calculate the specs of this iconic vessel. And being Mr. Nautical Study himself, I was ready to face the challenge. I learned a lot about submarines and naval engineering from my research, but ultimately I had to use multiple methods of determining the dimensions of the sub itself. In doing so, I got many different estimates on its size, but given that there was absolutely no reason for anyone to critique the movie's realism, that was somewhat expected. No one was supposed to do this, and the fact that I attempted it at all is ridiculous. For starters, let's discuss the vessel's size and how I came about it. Any normal person would just Google it, which I admittedly did at the start, but I understandably got nowhere because nobody would have thought to calculate the dimensions of a fictional submarine probably made of magic. I was ready to face the challenge though. Initially, I thought by using the heights of the actual beetle standing next to it that I could determine its size, but this proved to be wishful thinking. There is no point in the movie beyond this clip here where they stand in line with the center point of the sub, and the whole thing isn't even in shot. Instead, I figured, what's the most creative method I can use to determine the size of this thing from what I've got here? Alright, let's talk about this scene. Ringo is taken on top of a horse-like thing and is chased by what I think is supposed to be an American Indian, and in order to free him, they send the 7th US Cavalry Regiment clad in their 1800s gear. It's a funny clip in itself, but I determined that there was one thing in this shot that I would know the size of without a doubt, and that was the saber the leader of the regiment carries. Given that they were clad in late 1860s, early 1870s apparel, it's fair to assume he's carrying a standard issue Model 1860 light cavalry saber, which had its fun from the Civil War roughly to the Spanish-American War in 1898. Why is this important? Because each saber was uniformly crafted to be 42 inches long, meaning the one he carries is too. By using a ruler up against my laptop screen, I determined in real life the saber appeared about half a centimeter. The submarine in real life appeared about six centimeters. Some basic conversions here and there, and you get the sub's length at 113 feet and six inches, with a 41 foot beam, and beam means height. What's particularly curious about this is that a quick Google search reveals that the standard US nuclear sub has a beam of about 42 feet, meaning these dimensions are not tremendously realistic, especially in length, but they do have some merit, also, in calculating, I did not factor in the cartoony periscopes sticking out of the top because those are retractable. Okay, using those measurements, I used this forward shot to calculate its breadth at 43 feet and 8 inches. Which I mean, yeah, okay, sounds about right. Here are my notes. If you can't figure them out, I don't blame you, I couldn't either. At this point, I already had George's height written down and wanted to do something with it, so I calculated the size of the motor at 9.8 by roughly 14.3 inches. So we now know the submarine's dimensions, so now let's discuss everyone's favorite topic. Propulsion. We know for a fact that she has triple-bladed twin-screw propellers, but other than magic and music, we don't know what her engine runs on. There are two main engines for submarines today, diesel and nuclear. The first nuclear sub was made in 1947, being the USS Nautilus, and diesel subs have been around for ages, meaning either is likely. Now the diesel answer seems most feasible, because John wasn't too fond of nukes. But after re-listening to the song, I determined that Diesel was probably out of the question, because of one line where he says, Full steam ahead, Mr. Boatswain. Now that's just an expression, right? It doesn't necessarily mean the sub runs on steam. You however can hear a response saying, Full steam ahead it is, Sergeant. This isn't definitive, but we've already had to make a lot of assumptions in this video, so let's just go ahead with it. Also, I would play the song for you here, but YouTube doesn't seem to like that very much. The interior is littered with pipes, and a wheel is attached to a piston that I assume turns the propeller. I can't really tell. Do these pipes transfer steam to the engine? No clue, there could just be a pipe organ in there. It would certainly not be the weirdest thing on board. Entirely ruling out the diesel engine, two similar options sort of remain. The aforementioned nuclear motor, or the weirder steam engine option, used on the British K-class of submarines. Those subs were actually just a mess of accidents and deserve their own video in the future, but what's interesting is they were entirely propelled by a steam engine. British Admiral Jackie Fisher once said the most fatal error imaginable would be to put steam engines in submarines. Based on the experience of the K-Class, he turned out to be right, and with a name like that, I trust him as a born sailor. Given that diesel seems unlikely, and the hippy dippy beetles wouldn't have been too fond of using nuclear energy, it ridiculously seems the most likely result that steam engine based propulsion was used. 
The sub breaks down at one point, which mirrors the real life experience of these steam powered subs, which too broke down quite often. One thing I do know for certain comes from the published Yellow Submarine book, which states its propellers turn at a steady 33 and one third rotations per minute. Cool. Now before I wrap up, there's one more thing I wish to discuss from this movie. The intro and the book says Pepperland is 80,000 leagues below the sea. Obviously a reference to 20,000 leagues under the sea. Contrary to popular belief, traveling a league does not necessarily mean you're going straight down. The book 20,000 Leagues has them go around the world, which is about 20,000 leagues the way the crow flies. If Pepperland is 80,000 leagues away, that's enough to circle the Earth about four times. If you were to say it's 80,000 leagues downward, that would take you through the Earth and into space. 80,000 leagues upward is the distance to the moon and then some. So to say that Pepperland might actually be in space might not actually be such a long shot. Also, the book says it took eight days to get from Pepperland to Liverpool, meaning this submarine goes 10,000 leagues a day, or 34,523 miles a day, or roughly 1,438 miles per hour, which just so happens to be two times the speed of sound. That's one hell of a steam engine. Anyway, is any of this definitive? Absolutely not. I must put a disclaimer and say do not use my research as the 100% truth, because it isn't. I'm not saying these are the certain dimensions of the sub or that it has a steam engine. I'm just trying to put logic to the least logical creation of Western civilization. Also, I'm not good at math. So what did we learn today? Pepperland is in space, and every nobody is a somebody on the inside. That's all I got for you.